Danganronpa Tagami, Volume 3, Chapter 13, The Ascension of K, Part 1. Carol Chapik wrote, I don't need any masters, I know what I should do. Franz Kafka wrote, What's happened to me, he thought. It was no dream. Milan Kundera wrote, Kafka learned to kill Kafka because of his insistence of deciphering. Even with losing Borgs, I can still quote the words of the Shek writers. As for why? Well, that was a good thing to ask Kay. What should I choose? Go to the city, or climb the mountain. Shinobu decides to climb the mountain where the sniper is supposed to be. It's dangerous, but she believes that it's not as dangerous as wandering around in the city while being wanted. She starts climbing the mountain, but with only one eye, it's difficult to estimate the distance between her and the trees, so she stumbled upon them several times. She suddenly finds an open space right before her. There was an old log cabin, which looked like a restaurant, with tables and open-air seating. A sign said, temporarily closed for business. An old man stood there. Although it was summer, the old man wore a black hat and a black coat. It may be a bit redundant to say that he was a westerner. From his sharp blue eyes, she couldn't see anything like sociality or friendliness. Have you gotten rid of Borgs? The old man said. Follow me, Shinobu Togami. Part 2 She follows the old man to his house on the mountain. He hangs his coat and his hat up on the coat rack and boils the kettle. Shinobu notes that the place has a low ceiling, but the door is big enough not to be claustrophobic, and she sits at the table. As I watched his movements, out of the corner of my eye, I watched the tableware placed on the homemade bar and the woodworking tools piled near the doorway. A picture hanging on the wall came into my eyesight. It was a weird painting. A small animal that looked like a rat with a scary nose, where its nose supported its body like a leg. There was a certain factor in the painting that made it sinister, which caused my interest and anxiety. The old man, who has beautiful silver hair, puts two cups of coffee on a table and asks Shinobu to sit down and drink. Then he hands her an eye patch, saying her face looks scary with a hole in it. I've already understood the situation. That fake's world domination proclamation, even if I don't want to hear it, has been ringing in my ears. Others call me K. K? 13th in Latin, the 13th in poker. Speaking of K, that is the protagonist of A Hunger Artist, right? K says that is incorrect and is the name of the protagonist from various other stories. Shinobu apologises but admits to herself that she didn't come across as genuine. Forget it. As long as you say it is white, then black can also turn white. The old man who claimed to be called K snorted. The initial letter of Kafka is also K. Are you? The reason why people call me K is many, but the most common one is Clam. In the era of the Czech Republic and the socialist countries, that was what everyone was secretly calling the official of the secretariat. I don't know Czech at all. It means fraud. Shinobu shows him the piece of paper that Hiroyuki gave her. She says that it's too much of a coincidence that she met Kay right after getting the note, so she asks who he is. So please, tell me, who are you? Why do you know me? Asks Shinobu. Who are you? If you want to use that question to figure out my career and position, then it is still a little troubling to answer you. If you want to talk about the why, it is because I am an alumnus of Hope's Peak Academy. I participated in the development of the Bible plan. That project, and later in the participation in the development of Borgs with the Togami family, says Kay. When Shinobu brings up the Hasegawa Research Institute, and if he has any relation to the Ketoin conglomerate, K 
Kay has no idea what she's talking about. Kay goes on to talk about an interview with a writer who was questioned as to why he didn't go into detail about a character's past or appearance. His response? You dared to ask this in front of Kafka? What colour is the character's hair? And whether this person's father has money? (laughs) You should decide it yourself. Kay delves into what is important or not is dependent on what one's worldview is. Using several books as an example, and asks if what she sees as her reality is different. Enough. Enough what? I understand it. All these things. Please don't say these words. This is the right thing only. Only the reality I see is different, right? I've been vaguely aware of it, and now that I think about it, even though others have pointed this out to me again and again, I pretended not to notice it. In order for me to be me, in order for me to be a secretary, I can't admit it. However, after losing Borgs and Journey Under the Midnight Sun, and my identity, now I have that idea in my heart. Do I want to admit it? That Borgs is an irreplaceable right eye, as a vital signpost that has always been with me. It has been lying to me in a rather obvious manner. In this case, I don't have to be so stubborn. I firmly believe that I am not wrong. Kay quietly drank coffee for a while before suddenly the wrinkles in his eyes trembled and he whispered. The cause of this is Borgs, he said before continuing. You use Borgs in order to master the situation in this world. It makes the scene you see different from the reality in the eyes of ordinary people. I I don't understand. The writer that I mentioned said that when he translated his work into other languages, he was shocked because the translation was too casual. The French version changed, the English version changed, as for the Spanish version, I heard that the translator didn't even understand Czech at all. So the question is, how faithful was Borg's translation from the original? Or to be precise, how shameless was its adaption of it? Part 3 Kay explains that, alongside other graduates, he was contacted by Herb's Peak Academy's steering committee and given an outline of the Bible plan. After being pressured by the committee, he joined their research team alongside other former super high school level students who shared similar writing abilities, such as the former super high school level literary critic, poet, writer, suspense novelist, children's literature writer, essayist, and was the head of the software department where he collected talent data from the students in the school who had similar abilities. From there, the data was placed into the automatic writing system that was created by the hardware department. Thus, the creation of the story AI was born. Kay then continues on to explain that his hand in creating the AI's method of writing stories program, since, as he put it, It's like the difference between using AI for novels and chess. To let AI play chess, just tell it the rules. Let it read the past chess scores. But novels have no rules. If there are no rules, the AI can't write novels. So, as well for story data, I also wrote the method of writing stories, said Kay. Don't you let it learn writing skills? asked Shinobu. K explains that the meaning of it is different. Although it has methods of writing stories, it has many differences in writing technique than just what he fed into the system. He explains what he means by quoting Chapek and Rousseau, who all have different styles of writing, logic, techniques and the like. He mentions that Carol Chapek is also a K. Uh, what you are saying feels a bit complicated. I'll tell you an analogy. For example, there is such an experiment where a mathematician and a writer live on an uninhabited island. The condition is that the two islands have the same area and have the same problem. They can be escaped the same way. However, at this time, the two people may take completely different actions, and the method of fleeing may be different. Since their occupation is different, there is no common ground for the two people's actions or principles. Thus, as a result, the actions they take are different. 
so the difference between the actions taken by mathematicians and writers against uninhabited islands serves as the differences in the novel? And that's the method of writing stories. Is that really the case? I doubt very much how much I understand of K. In any case, the Bible plan started like this. Then it failed. Failed? It takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of manpower. And the story generated by AI is not that great. At least that is how I judged it after reading it with the other team members. Why would it fail? <laughs> of course it would. How can you write a story that anyone can recover hope on first reading? You said it yourself so clearly that I don't know what to say. A life-changing book. There is such a saying. Some books can make people immersed in it, and some books can change one's outlook on life. But they wanted a book that can have an effect on all humans. To get this effect is simply an idiotic dream. To make readers with different ages, genders, nationalities, and political positions have the same opinion after reading? How could such a book be written? So, because humans can't write it, they let an AI write it? Indeed. In fact, the story AI had done a good job. It responds brilliantly to the requirements of human selfishness. However, the result was terrible. The story AI had written a Bible-like thing. A fake Bible. This is also a matter of interpretation. For now, to say which book is the best book that can bring hope to a despairing people, a Bible was certainly the best choice. What? This is true. That's it. The Bible plan shamelessly carried out the biblical reproduction, which was rather boring. This was no different to the shameful behaviour of other cults around the world. To transcend the Bible, creativity is indispensable, because if there is no creation, then it cannot be broken. It's at the forefront. If you don't have the ability to create, you can't write a story? Shinobu thinks of what Byakuya had said previously being similar to this. Using the database to write stories is too limiting, as it can only create stories similar to the existing story. The essence of creation is indispensable for a truly new story to be born. The story needs originality, as well as an ancient and modern writing technique. Silence. When I was with Kay, I had a few coffees from time to time, and spent a period of speechless time together. My gaze naturally turned to the painting of the small animal hanging on the wall. The animal that stands with a surprisingly small nose should be a fictional animal, but it has eyes, ears and legs. If a painter with the essence of creation draws something new, I don't think it will be a creature at all. Creation is such greatness, and it is such a deformity. Therefore, it must be. Kay reckons that even though the Bible plan was frozen, that the rumoured despair novel was a product created with the same Bible plan technique, but it's difficult for him to tell. It's possible that the story AI may or may not be involved with the despair disease as well. Is there someone who supplements it? Like someone other than you? Mm, that shouldn't be possible. But I have a hypothesis. If one can make it work, it's just as good as the effect that Borgs has on you. Or maybe not. What's the matter? Don't worry, I'll explain it one by one. Although the Bible plan is frozen, as a matter of course, the story AI shows a very intriguing tendency. That is... With just one story, it can produce different research ideas from multiple different perspectives. Uh, can you tell me something more straightforward? Please? Do you know the Mona Lisa? Of course I know it. Have you actually seen it? No. Since you haven't actually seen it, how can you say that you know it? He seemed to become suddenly angry. Well, because there are textbooks or on TV, you know, I can see it whenever I want. Since there isn't a textbook, who photographed the Mona Lisa with a camera? Since it is on the TV, who recorded it with the video? This is what the story AI can do. Do you understand? Uh, I, I don't really understand. 
Because we are not Da Vinci, it is impossible for us to draw the Mona Lisa in principle. However, we can create the back or the lower body of the Mona Lisa. We can use Mona Lisa's portrait data for use in collage artwork creation, or writing about the Mona Lisa in a woman's novel. In fact, there are such works of art and books. According to this current statement, it's secondary creation, combining or deriving something from that work. Secondary creation? Suddenly a modern vocabulary emerged, and I was somewhat unprepared. The story AI has become an expert in fiction techniques. Although there are no rules in the novel, there are some things that are customary. It must show the characters, tell the background, and let the plot blend into the historical situation. It must be empty when the scene is converted. Lines must be numbered. Must add a new description. New description texts. Shidabu thinks that this premise is too big, which just makes Kay more upset that she doesn't understand. He uses examples of various authors, which all come to the main point that, while you think these books would be based in realism, because they are about real events and real people, they also have the freedom to blend in things like jokes, which never happened at the real event, only added later. He also talks about how many of these realist authors, too, have a K in their name. Hey, although the tangent you were talking about is very interesting, uh, can we get back to the main topic? Shinobu cuts in. This is also the topic, but forget it, K nearly retching said, using his coffee to moisten his throat. We let the story AI swallow a lot of data, and as a result, it has the kind of tendency I just stated prior. For a story, it can produce different research ideas from multiple different perspectives. We did an experiment on it. Do you know Metamorphosis? I've read it. Kay explains that by feeding the story Metamorphosis to the story AI, that it was able to study that data and then write many different versions of the story with many different altered scenarios. It even created stage play and comic book versions as well. Shinobu says it sounds like it became a light novelist who specialises in metamorphosis. However, it wasn't only limited to metamorphosis. Even if other works of other writers are given to it, it can also be used for secondary creation and writing fake books. We named the story AI the K2K system, and decided to let it evolve on its own. The K2K system. It seems that the letter K also appears here, two of them even. The Bible plan ran out of funding, but even so we didn't think failure was important. We were obsessed with the K2K system, and even developed up to the version 2.3. The K2K system began writing, and kept writing. It turned into a writing machine, a writing robot. Kay's words made me feel shocked. I am a writing machine, a word puppet. Just a note-taking tool for writing Journey Under the Midnight Sun. Now after losing Borgs and Journey Under the Midnight Sun, can I still be so sure of myself? K continues by saying that the word robot was developed in Czech as forced labour, which was widely known at the time due to Chapik's writings. He states that propositions like robots gaming the same dignity as humans is dying due to the fact of what the K2K systems can manufacture. Basically, because the K2K system can now go beyond human authors, they will have a sense of crisis in their own dignity as writers. Shinobu says that it would be fairly unbearable if robots were really to take over the art form. Kay says, However, this is the reality. In this way, after becoming the perfect pen machine, the K2K system soon triggered an incident. It destroyed a person in the research team. Part 4 It created interference, Kay says. This book changed my life. One of the people in the group collapsed after seeing it as required. Is that person dead? Mm, from that point of view, the opposite is true. That person has become a murderer. Wait, you just said interference, right? Oh? 
So what you were saying is the story AI, the K2K system, can write something that affects human thoughts, but the Bible plan wasn't successful, right? In the end, it was just interference with an individual. Didn't I just say that? This book changed my life, not our lives. The K2K system wrote a story for that person. Does the K2K system have the will to do that kind of thing? The K2K system has no will. Still, even if there is no will, AI can get a car to the destination, and you can talk to AI on the phone. Now in schools, AI has become the secretary of most people. It can recommend things to you, a book you'd like, help you pick the hotel you want to stay in, and tell you the symptoms of your sickness. It can also give you the most suitable medicine. The K2K system is no different from that, just that it mechanically makes a recommended book for you. However, its destructive power is enormous. Just like reading The Sorrows of Young Werther to a person who is troubled by love. Not long ago, I couldn't do anything without Borgs, but this interpretation made me feel scared. Among the things recommended by AI, if something intense and full of charm has the ability to destroy the human spirit, can I refuse it at that time? No, maybe I have already seen it before I even noticed. Because that person took the data, what kind of story he saw was unknown. But only from the results, that person became a murderer. Nearly half of the research team was killed, and because of this, after the storm, Hope's Peak Academy learned about the existence of the K2K system. After understanding the situation, the steering committee intended to freeze the entire K2K system, but we took it away because after the data was separated from it, the capacity of a disk was enough to accommodate it. The system is always as simple as possible. Then there is actually no K2K system in the school, right? Correct, because we were also worried the steering committee would use it for other purposes. That school was like this before. They can't be trusted at all. Then Despair High School grabbed it from the team members who fled with the K2K system? I've never heard of such a stupid organisation with a name like that, but I don't rule out that possibility. There is also one possibility which is the most terrible. I also said that the research group of the Bible plan had data from many super high school level students. If these people are trying to take their talents, it would be easy to embark on the path to evil. You used to do evil, huh? They probably don't think it's evil at all. It may be that someone linked the K2K system to Despair High School. Although I am very reluctant to think so, it's not impossible to see that the current Despair novel has actually spread throughout the world. We may face countless enemies. This kind of uneasiness made a chill crawl up my spine. Listen to what I say next, and then tremble. Kay's blue eyes turned to my right half of my face, so I noticed that the topic had finally turned to this point. I was trying to hide Borgs, and finally found a suitable vault. That is you, Shinobu Tagami, Kay said. Borgs is controlled by the K2K system. And that was the episode for today. Let us get on to the translation notes. Karol Chepek was a Czech writer, playwright, and critic. He has become best known for his science fiction, including his novel War with the Nudes, 1936, and play Rossum Universal's Robots, 1920, which introduced the word robot. He also wrote many politically charged works dealing with the social turmoil of his time. Influenced by American pragmatic liberalism, he campaigned in favour of free expression and strongly opposed the rise of both fascism and communism in Europe. Franz Kafka was a German-speaking bohemian novelist and short story writer, widely regarded as one of the major figures of the 20th century literature. His work, which fuses elements of realism and the fantastic, typically features isolated protagonists facing bizarre or surrealistic predicaments and incomprehensible socio-bureaucratic powers, 
and has interpreted as exploring the themes of alienation, existential anxiety, guilt and absurdity. His best known works include The Metamorphosis, The Trial and The Castle. The term Kafkaesque has entered the English language to describe situations like those found in his writing. Kafka was born into a middle-class Ashkenazi Jewish family in Prague, the capital of the Kingdom of Bohemia, then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, today the capital of the Czech Republic. Milan Kundera is a Czech writer who went into exile in France in 1975, becoming a naturalised French citizen in 1981. Kundera's Czech citizenship was revoked in 1979 and was not restored until 2019. He sees himself as a French writer and insists his work should be studied in French literature and classified as such in bookstores. He is known for his beautiful silver hair and blue eyes, which contrast to the black outfits he enjoys wearing. As of 2020, he is the only author mentioned in Danganronpa to be still alive. Whether or not you understand what I am saying, well I guess is up for your interpretation. As for the painting of the rat, well, if you're a fan of other Danganronpa spin-offs, you should understand where that's going. And if not, uh, I recommend going to read Kirigiri So before the next part. Or you're going to be a little lost. A Hunger Artist is a short story by Franz Kafka, first published in 1922. The story was also included in the collection A Hunger Artist. The last book Kafka prepared for publication after his death. The protagonist, who is a hunger artist, who experiences the decline in appreciation of his craft, is typically Kafkaesque, an individual marginalised and victimised by society at large. The book explores themes such as death, art, isolation, asceticism, spiritual poverty, futility, personal failure, and the corruption of human relationships. <laughs> the title of the story has also been translated as a fasting artist and a starvation artist. Clam refers to the short story by Kafka, The Castle. The German title Das Schloss may be translated as the castle or the palace, but the German word is a homonym that can also refer to a lock. It is also phonetically close to der Schloss, conclusion or end, sorry if I pronounce that badly. The castle is locked and closed to K, the protagonist of the castle, whose name is K, and the townspeople, neither can gain access. The name of the character Clam is similar to Klammer in German, which means clip, brace, peg, fastener, and may hold a double meaning. For Clam is essentially the lock that locks away the secrets of the castle, and the salvation of Kay. In ordinary usage, Clam is an adjective that denotes a combination of dampness and chill, and can be used in reference to both weather and clothing, which inscribes a sense of unease into the main character's name. In Czech, Clam means delusion or deceit. Jean-Jacques Rousseau was a Genevan philosopher, writer and composer. His political philosophy influenced the progress of the Enlightenment throughout Europe, as well as aspects of the French Revolution and the development of modern political, economic and educational thought. Secondary creation is not a term commonly used in copyright jurisprudence, and it is difficult to ascertain its actual coverage. For instance, there are views suggesting that secondary creation should include translations and adaptions or should be treated as derivative works. However, the concepts of translation and adaption, both being derivative works, are unclear under international copyright treaties and copyright laws in different jurisdictions. In particular, the owner of the copyright in a work has the exclusive rights to make a translation or adaption of the same. Although there may be original elements in the later work itself, it may not be appropriate to take this as the sole basis in considering any copyright exception, the provision of a copyright exception solely based on, rather the ambiguous concept of secondary creation, may blur the line between infringing and non-infringing works, create uncertainty and increase opportunities for abuse. 
The Metamorphosis is a novella written by Franz Kafka, which was first published in 1915. One of Kafka's best known works, The Metamorphosis tells the story of salesman Gregor Samsa, who wakes up one morning to find himself inexplicably transformed into a huge insect, literally known as the monstrous vermin, subsequently struggling to adjust to this new condition. The novella has been widely discussed among literary critics, with differing interpretations being offered. I don't blame you if you immediately thought of the other metamorphosis. Uh, <laughs> As for the K2K system, yes, this is what is speaking to the reader during the book's opening in DRT 1, 2 and 3. Although I don't think in 2 it's included in our summaries, or Jess's summaries that we read. Uh, and it also speaks to the reader during book 1 during an intermission. So no, it is not you, Yasato. So do your own research, TV Tropes. I swear, every time TV Tropes has, uh, every time TV Tropes has some sort of misinformation about the books, take take a swig of beer, like a whole swig, and you'll get drunk very soon, because it is full of it. Do do not trust TV Tropes. The Sorrows of Young Werther is a loosely autobiographical epistolary novel by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, first published in 1774. A revised edition followed in 1787. It was one of the most important novels in the Sturm und Drang period in German literature, and influenced the later Romantic movement. Goethe, aged 24 at the time, finished Werther in five and a half weeks of intense writing, in January to March 1774. The book's publication instantly placed the author among the foremost international literary celebrities, and was among the best known of his works. It is written in the form of letters, and is basically a depressing love story. Well, that'll be it for this episode, hope you enjoyed, it was a little bit of a shorter one this time, but things are starting to hit the fan now, so look out for more soon, hope you enjoyed. Sorry for the long delays between episodes. You know how life gets. So yeah, thank you everyone so much for watching. Have a good day.